Welcome. So today I've got Sharon joining me. Sharon is someone who worked with me back in January. We were just talking about this, me and Sharon. Back in January when she joined, it was um, like a four-week reset program. And it was a mixture of training and nutrition. And I was on that program with a couple of PTs. And I came in from the nutrition perspective. And that's how I started coming back to Sharon and getting to know Sharon. And then I reckon, was it, you just said it was about a month after that, Sharon, that you reached out. Or a wee bit longer. Yeah. yeah. About a month. Um, and then Sharon reached out to me to ask to work with me one-to-one with her around nutrition. And I think it's fair to say Sharon's focus was, yes, whilst it's about weight loss, but she wanted the goal of kind of feeling healthier in her body. So Sharon, I'll let you explain to me, what would you say was the reason you reached out and wanted to work with myself? Over the years, I know that I've had some health issues um, and I've kind of considered before, should I go see a nutritionist? Should I go out and get some help in my diet? I don't feel... I've, I've kind of had the basics there in terms of I know what healthy is, I know what unhealthy is, and I know what my bad habits are, actually. I think I always had that in my head. Um, but it's such a minefield out there, and you're so scared of sort of who to trust and who not to trust, I guess, in that area. So when we did the reset plan, and I got to know you through people who recommended you other PTs that I'd already been working with, and actually straight away, I liked that you almost debunked a lot of the myths for me. So it was kind of like, you know what, well, actually, let's script this back. Let's make this really simple. Let's let's forget about sort of like all this complicated stuff. You want a snack, have some fruit. Don't worry about the sugar content. You want to eat something, focus on your protein, and then we'll go into big portions afterwards if you can still not fall. So a lot, it just makes sense. Yeah, and I know you said there, but probably one of your hesitations was the fear of like, who do you trust? I know I've experienced that myself. And I started off my fitness journey with PTs. And even in my business, when you're looking for a coach, it's difficult or even a physio. You know, it's like any service is good yeah. people, well, there's lots of good people and it really is a challenge. What would you say your worst fear was maybe going, not spending the money, investing the money, maybe not getting the results? Or what would you say your biggest yeah, fear was? absolutely. So as a kind of at one point, even I had a conversation with my boyfriend, am I stupid to sort of consider spending this amount of money? And he was like, if this time next year you come back and tell me you want to spend this amount of money again doing this, I'd say yes, but at the moment, I think give it a go. If you're learning things, if these habits are things that you're still using and you're still seeing those things that work for you, great. That's what you're learning. It's not necessarily you're learning, I'm going to be a size six and then next year I'm going to be a size six and then I'm a size six. It's about actually what is it you're taking from this in terms of what habits. So for me, it was a little bit of a fear of cooking. It was a little bit of a kind of a fear of, well, how do I stop that snacking? What happens with my body in terms of the whole kind of, now I've hit that slump at three o'clock, I go and just eat something easy. What are my other options? I think getting over that really helped. And what would you say there was a few kind of key learnings, takeaways that you've taken from the Revive Women program? Um, so first of all, it doesn't have to be as complicated as you think it is. Um, a lot of it is quite simple. Um, I kind of, for a while, I was drilling it down in my head. There's like three P's, right? It's kind of like you're focusing on your protein, focusing on your portion size. And what was my third one? Protein portion size. I'm I'm planning, get your planning in place. And if you've got those three things in place, that makes such a big difference. Um, And actually, you know, take planning, for example. I've always been somebody who's done a bit of a weekly shop. So I've planned quite repetitive meals anyway. So it didn't really sort of, the whole sitting down and going, right, I'm going to do my weekly shop and I'm going to have to plan my meals for the next week isn't a new thing. The thing that's new is going, oh, actually, I'm going to plan these meals and they're going to be interested and I'm going to enjoy them. Yeah, and I think that's an important thing, Sharon, because a lot of people say to me, oh, I don't have time. And I find it really interesting because you're basically saying you don't have time to feed yourself, which is the weirdest thing for you. People are like, I'm too busy, I don't have time to plan. But ultimately, as you mentioned, you do it already. And I think people yeah, like to think like we eat a lot of variety, but we eat a lot of the same things. We might just cook it slightly different. Yeah. So this week, even my boyfriend said to me, like, oh, you're having chicken again. I was like, well, yeah, but, you know, we had chicken with pasta on Saturday. Yesterday, I had chicken with kind of like a bit of a salad. And tonight, I'm going to have chicken that's going to be with couscous and with some veg that have wrapped up. So they're all different. Yes, I've had chicken three days running. It's using up a pack of chicken. And actually, it's more economical that way because it means that I'm using the chicken, I'm eating the appropriate portion, so I'm not trying to eat the whole box of chicken in one go. And I'm making three interesting meals out of it. 
and my freezer so you said they're about simplifying it so it's not as complicated and you've got your three p's around your protein your planning and what was the other one um protein planning and portion five portion size too would you say that was your three main takeaways or have you got bills on top of those i think those are the three main ones in terms of what i really do and so and and even portion size it doesn't have to be complex right because and and why i focus on that is mainly on things like my grains you know like actually my grains I know that there's a little measurement on the um, packet, and that's generally similar to what we had in our food plans. Similarly, I know what you told me a piece of chicken was. And okay, my piece of chicken might be slightly bigger than that, but I know that it's not much more than. So I, it's, what you were telling me wasn't much less than a full half a chicken in a two chicken pack. So I know what I'm going for. So it's really about just understanding that planning and keeping that kind of routine, I think. I'm not overstressing it either. You know, sometimes you're going to, I'm not going to pretend I'm never going to eat chocolate again. I'm going to eat chocolate again. I'm going to get, I'm going to encourage you to have it, Sharon. I'm like, have it. I remember what it was that you got. It was something you got and it was like a box of um, treats. I think it was Easter. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, Sharon, have them. Just split it up and have them. And you're like, really? Yeah, eat them. Um, you don't have to eat a whole box of ones. <laughs> um, but I'm also sort of getting into a bit of a routine with that as well where I'm like, Actually, I know that I like puddings and I know that my boyfriend likes puddings. So rather than just going, right, we'll just reach for the first processed pudding off the um, shelf that we see, I've got the recipe books out and so I'm going, right, okay, you know, I can make a bit of a sorbet. I can make sort of, I did them, um, I think that was a chaya pudding recipe that you gave me on one of your documents. That was really nice. And so sort of, again, they're not as complicated things when you get down and look at it. It's like, that took 10 minutes to make that. <laughs> it didn't take a lot of time. And it's a lot nicer than something that's just off the shelf. Absolutely. And I know you mentioned here about your boyfriend, Richard, saying, well, if you're still coming to go back and spend money, like you've not learned from this whole process, this whole coaching piece, then maybe it is a waste of money. But would you say you have learned enough? Because we're yeah. going back giving you tools forever more. And I always get people, this is about long-term lifestyle change. What's your response on this? Yeah, definitely say it. I was kind of like, I guess I wasn't really confident with cooking. And I'd say I'm still not massively confident with cooking, but I've got a cupboard full of um, herbs and spices and it's sort of like, right, okay, this is a plan Julie gave me. Now let's make this sensible for me. Well, I know that actually a lot of the time I was eating chicken. I know I was eating a lot of salmon. I know it was vegetable or it was salad quite a lot of the time. And I know that a lot of those dressings, which are sometimes swap around a bit, but they're basically oil with the spice in them. Um. And I've got more confident about just going on a website and looking for a recipe and go, right, okay, I, I know I can follow a recipe because you gave me recipes to follow and I managed to follow them. So it's not going to be a kitchen disaster. Um, and mostly I've decided that I'm enjoying the food. So but a little bit more adventurous about, okay, there's a there's an ingredient that I don't know what it is. But before I sort of go, oh, it might be too spicy, it might be too hot, it might not taste nice. Just try a little bit of it and just see... <laughs> Worst case scenario, make something else if I don't like it afterwards. So it's like you've been a bit more adventurous with food and building your confidence for your skills as well. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. And then I think that's had a bit of a knock on them when I do go out in terms of, oh, actually, I don't just want the same old pizza that I always had. I, I feel a bit more adventurous with what I choose there as well. So the whole thing sort of like become a bit of a, like a curveball, a rolling curveball. And I, I feel so much myself anyway they sort of like it do not have those three o'clock in the afternoon thoughts anymore so knowing that i stopped for that and knowing that i did that without sort of like reaching for a load of snacks in the middle of the day i know that there's a benefit here yes yeah, so i was just going to touch on that so a safe thing weight loss because since january how much weight have you lost in total so far about a cent and a half just over a cent and a half and I know you mentioned before we start recording about actually for you, it was about focusing on health. And I know you mentioned about you had some health challenges coming up. And you just mentioned your energy. You just say, actually, by looking at your nutrition, the benefits have been more than you expected. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. So that thing with like the afternoon slumps, I've had that sort of continually. And actually, there's quite a lot going on in my life at the moment. So I'm not always in a kind of a not always able to get out and exercise and things are quite stressful I'm sometimes not having the greatest night's sleep but I know that 
I've got the things in the freezer to help me get through those. I've got the food that helps me get through that. And I know that even though I might feel a bit rubbish today because it's just the age I am, it's not feeling rubbish because I'm not eating right. I, I'm feeling better than I would be feeling otherwise. So do you think it's allowed you to kind of pinpoint, actually, I feel a bit rubbish today because I've not had a great night's sleep. I feel a bit rubbish because things are a bit stressful or I'm feeling a bit rubbish because of my hormones. Yeah, a little bit, definitely. And overall, then have you had a conversation with Richard and he's gone, actually, this was beneficial, Sharon. It was actually a wise decision. Yeah, I have. And he's, sort of, he's really supportive anyway, so he's sort of fully supportive with me. He's still doing, so he's still cooking meals based on what I've been cooking and he's still sort of like going, oh, hang on a minute, what are some of those ingredient packets? What do you mean you don't want those? Um, it's quite funny actually because when I've been cooking quite often and I'm really looking at portion sizing, being like, right, okay, in this pan, when I cook, two thirds is for you, one third is for me. Um, and that's from your little things, you know, where you gave us the chats where you were like, for a female, one protein is that and for a male, two is that kind of thing. Or one carb is that and for a male, is two of that. So it's like two thirds of everything is yours. So I get to his house and they'll be like, come here, how much of this do you want and how much are you giving to me? <laughs> Right. And do you feel like you've had to miss out on anything at all? Or do you feel like actually it's fitted in with your lifestyle? It's fitted in with my lifestyle really well, actually. I don't think it's so much missing out. It's just changing what you want and what you like. Um, so like, yeah, I've got a sweet tooth. If I want something sweet, I'll go around the shop, but it won't be a bag of licorice all sorts anymore or a far pack of cookies. It'll be, it might be really nice dark chocolate border cookies or a 90% bar of green and black chocolate or something like that but it won't be kind of the same old rubbish and it'll probably be you sit here and I have like this little bit of it and then I go I've had enough now and that's fine and that's touched it but more often than not it tends to be oh here's a recipe for sorbet that I I know I can make and that's really nice and I know we've enjoyed it so I'll have that or I've started making myself some um muffins like some little um banana and blueberry muffins that are on one of the websites and it's kind of like all right i've got a load of them in the freezer it'll be one of those or they it's not so much missing out it's changing what nice is for me but al would you recommend it to friends or family in terms of going through this whole process the learning that you've done yeah definitely i would say the one thing i would say is that you're not a miracle worker so it can't be you've got to have the mindset in place yourself that you've got to be clear in your head what it is you're trying to get from it so for me it wasn't about weight loss and my weight loss has been quite slow and it's still quite slow and i'm okay with that i'm happy with that because i know that that's what's in my head and i know that there are some things that i'm not going to adapt so i know for example on a saturday i'm probably going to have a couple of drinks it's not going to be a crazy amount but i'm going to have a couple of drinks that's probably going to mean I'm going to move a little bit more slowly than if I went, right, knock it all out, we'll go completely to hell. Um, so, yeah, definitely. It's about, it's definitely helped me, but I think you also have to be in the right place to let it help you. That makes well, sense. And I remember us having that discussion, actually, because with yourself, Sean, I knew from working with you in January that you were going to take action and you were, you're brilliant because you keep asking questions. And I love that when clients come and ask questions and you're learning, you're inquisitive, and you're setting yourself up for the future success. Yeah. And I can come and carry 50 bricks for you, but you need to carry those 50 bricks too. And when clients aren't carrying the 50 bricks, I can't do the work for you. And as you said, some people might think they're ready, um, but I can tell through the conversation I have initially, and that's why I have a conversation with people first, is I can tell through ways they respond to what their readiness is, because ultimately I'm not going to take someone's money if they're not ready because it's a waste of my time. It's not going to be a good experience for them. So absolutely what you said, you've got to be in a place that you're going to be putting the work in um, to adopt the lifestyle changes. Absolutely. And you've also got to sort of work out what it is you're going to adopt. So I know there was a lot of things we talked about. We talked about things, for example, like um, journaling and like some of my nighttime routine. Some of that isn't going to hold as stringently as you were trying to get me to hold it. But I see the benefits of some of it as well. So some of it now is like, right, okay, this is what Julie's plan was. She was trying to show me the perfection side of this. Now in my life, how do I make this work for me? So actually, if I know I'm going to be in a stressy time, I sit down and I make myself a list and I have it on paper because that's better than having my mental list. And you know, I take that time out and I sometimes do switch to TV off half an hour before I go to bed because 
just having that quiet space helps me. Absolutely. And it's that thing going to hear more about trying this and playing with it and experimenting because, you know, I'm always passionate about everyone's individual. I didn't even mention about the weight loss, the weight loss is slow. But um, as I posted actually today, that's reality. Weight loss is slow and any slim world, slim fast, whatever you want to call it, cell shape, so we're going to do this quickly. Yeah, you can do it quickly, but you're not going to do it long term. So it is going to be slow and the amount you've lost along the timeline is spot on to what that is. And I know when you're in the process, it might feel slow and it can feel frustrating. I think you've had a plateau for weeks and I loved it because you came back and said, it's fine, it'll drop, it's fine. I was like, shit, it. <laughs> Yeah, and it's it, and and then that then it goes back to that thing about trust, doesn't it? It's sort of like in the world that we live in today, people are selling you these dreams about you know you can drop a dress size in like six weeks, and you do this and you do that. All you have to do is eat cabbage soup for a month. But yeah, that's not sustainable. That can't. I've, and even laid back years ago, when I was first starting out looking, I had in mind at one point I'd only use Weight Watchers because I thought that that was a well, sort of a just a plan, and it kind of is because it's part of eat less, you eat what you want. I'm not restricting you, but I was never ever going to go for a fad diet, and I think that was one of the first things I liked about when we started working together. You, you know, you weren't telling me anything that was faddy or that, or you know, eat this or don't drink that, it was all realistic stuff, absolutely. Because I couldn't believe that for it to be that long term, and the science is there around the yo yo diet. And- and you diet and you start off, you lose weight. And then the science is that you end up gaining more than when you originally started out. And people continue on that pattern. And then as we spoke about, once the hormones kick in, things do slow down. And it does make it harder for us to lose the weight. Not that it's impossible, but it does take longer. Um, and yeah. you've got to be along for that ride. Yeah, exactly. I think we we always talked about tweaks, didn't we? So I think when I first came to, I was like, you know, actually, I think I've got a basis. Um, and one of the plans you did me, I think they had four or five meals in and I was like, I, I can't wear this. I can't do a five meal plan. And you're like, yeah, it's fine. Here's a three meal plan then. But in that three meal plan, I'll make it that some of the meals are that you can break them up. So they have a yogurt and they have a piece of fruit. And so you don't have to eat that at the point in breakfast. And then all of a sudden I'm like, hang on a minute. This has now gone back to my three meal plan, but they've got potential for snacks and all she did is put the snacks in the meals. Um, the basis of that is how do you tweak it then to make it and I think that's the bit where you helped me. It was just, uh, these are the tweaks you need. And they they weren't really radical tweaks, I don't feel. I don't feel like anything you said to me has been like, wow, that's something totally off the plate that you've not heard before. Absolutely. People tried to complex nutrition and they tried to complicate reference it, tried to complicate it because then it makes them feel like they're adding more value and they can sell something else. But it is about finding what works for you. And that is the challenging part for me as a coach to make sure I'm getting feedback from you to help you get to that place. And that's where I said you're brilliant because you're coming back, let me know where you are, where your head's at, what's working, what's not. And that's how we can get from a place of giving you the long term so you know what you're doing and you can be more intuitive if you're eating and tune into how things feel for you what's working for you and if you're not feeling great that day you can look back and work what happens in the as like, okay that's what it was what's happening now in my body and understand that so you've got more control do you feel like you've got kind of more control over your health yeah definitely so since i've sort of quit well finished with the plan i've had sort of like i had a bit of a weight loss immediately i had a small plateau and again, in the middle of that, I was like, this happened before, this happened when I was on the plow, this is fine. I'm out of any age, I know I'm out of any age. It's just the age, and sure enough, it's going down again. <laughs> it's just the way that it is. And unfortunately, I think for the next five years or so, that might be my life. It's <laughs> just the way it is. Yeah. And my life, we just have to live with it, don't we? we? You know, as long as it's not going, so for me almost, the way in and the scales is less about what do I want to lose tomorrow and making sure that I don't end up doing that. Yeah, but the whole kind of BMI, the health index indicator. And I always say as well, it was the scale weight of the body measurements, the feel of your clothes and what you touched on trying around yeah. energy. That's super important. And then what you're craving as well. I mean, it can be hormone driven, but sometimes there's a reason for it because your body is intuitive. It does know what it wants. Um, it's just unfortunately it doesn't know what foods are in. So you're kind of going to go and grab whatever's there. There was enough news though where I was kind of like, Oh, I really, I really feel like I'm going to have something else. For some reason, I got in my head that I was going to make some pancakes. And I don't know why, because I'm not even a massive fan of pancakes. But I was like, 
I'm gonna have a go at making pancakes. I'm gonna have a go at making pancakes. And I was like, I'm just gonna sit with this for ten minutes. I'm just gonna sit in ten minutes if I still feel like this. I'm gonna just go and have a look at something else and just leave it alone for ten minutes and see where we go because in ten minutes I might feel different. And sure enough, in ten minutes I was like, no, nah, it's past now. I'm gonna wait on for tea time. And I think sometimes when you sort of just jump onto, oh, I think I'm craving this. I'm gonna go straight for it. You kind of lead yourself down the wrong path. Yeah, when you're almost reactive to that hunger. Yeah. And it wasn't, I mean, that obviously wasn't real hunger. It was just that uh, this idea had popped in my head. And I was like, yeah, I think I might do that. But in reality, not really what I wanted. Absolutely. If you hadn't sat with that, then you might not have learned that actually it's not hunger, it's boredom, it's stress, it's yeah. tired. Yeah. And then just thinking back. The way you were, Sharon, when you were thinking about joining with me, if someone's in that same place and they're thinking, oh, I'm not sure, what would you say to them? I'd ask them sort of like what they think in terms of what, what they're trying to get from this first of all. What is their aim? So I've had a couple of people say to me, like, oh, you, you've lost weight, blah, 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 what have you done? And I said, well, you know, working with a nutritionist, I started planning my meals and just looking at sort of portion sizes a bit more. Oh, I don't want to plan. Well, you don't want to do that. You're not going to get out of it. So, you know, it's great. It's different. It does. It's looking at how you see food and how you see nutrition more so than you're going to get in a mass market club. But if you're not in the place where you want to take it in, it's not going to help you. Do you think people assumed you were doing some sort of slimming club or some bad diet? Potentially, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was quite... Open. And actually, there are still some people who don't really know the ins and outs of what I'm doing, and I'm not sure they they. I'll tell them at some point, but I'm not sure they even know what it is that's changed. Yeah, and no, I was the same. I was the same, and I say that you don't have to share with people. But it's funny when you lose weight how suddenly people are interested, and they don't notice at the start. And once you've lost about a stone, a stone and a half, and they're like, "Oh, you are right." But then no one speaks to you when you feel overweight, when you're getting these ailments and things. Yeah. These there but when you start to have a it's going at a house the other day she's like you got a scone and i was like no oh, you could have a scone now i've got some scones in it yeah but i don't want one and she couldn't get that whole fact that the reason i wasn't having a scone wasn't because i thought the scones were bad or terrible or that it was i just didn't want one <laughs> and she goes, no, you could have one and I'm like, i know i could i just don't want to yeah and that's it people try to pull you in right i always say that but the feeders right they try and pull you in and it makes them feel better for having it if you accompany them. And if you're not having it or sharing it with them, then they feel bad for having it. But I always can respond with, actually, I just don't want to feel rubbish. So I don't want it. Yeah. And I think she's sort of, she's probably still sat there thinking, why didn't you want it? You know, what did I say wrong? What did I do wrong? Did you think it was, like, you know, I just didn't want it because I didn't, didn't feel hungry and had quite a good lunch. So I mean, no, you know, do. Absolutely. And how do you feel about your future health then overall? I'm fairly positive, pretty good, yeah. Better than I was. I mean, I'm not having symptoms that I've been having for 10, 15 years previously. So that's all good. Um, and still sort of like combining the nutrition with the exercise side and trying to get out and keep the mindset in place. So yeah, I'm, I feel fairly positive about what I can do. And, you know, and I know that I can cook things. I know that. I went to a stage, I think, where I was like, Julie, I need a recipe for this, I need a recipe for this, I need a recipe for this. There's recipes everywhere. And I've got less concerned about counting how many calories in an, are in every recipe. I'm more about, right, okay, as you're making this a recipe, have a look, how many does it say it's for? Are we, shall we divide this out right? Say, so I got a book actually, and I did two different salad recipes within a week of each other. One of them was the mozzarella and tomato salad that served for. And I split that in two and I was like, yeah, clearly I needed to split that into it felt like that. And then from the same bullet from the week after I had another recipe. It was a chicken chicken rice salad and I thought, oh, this is so far, so this is gonna be me and Richard tonight, this is gonna be it. And I was eating it, I ate it. We the pair of us had it on Wednesday and I then I had it on Thursday and I had it on Friday and I was like, Yeah, in that case, four was definitely four and it was four sort of like really big servings, so kind of like keep him keep you a what I think I want to eat, but also be aware of kind of like when you're making something, how many does it say it serves? If that's what you realistically want to try and divide it by before you start sort of like trying to eat more of it. If then you're still hungry, eat a bit more. But start with what it tells you. 
Absolutely. And you mentioned there about you don't experience symptoms anymore. Is that the IBS type symptoms you were speaking about? The, the IBS type symptoms and those sort of sugar cravings that I used to have. I used to think that I must be sort of borderline diabetic or going somewhere that way in terms of they typically what I'd do, I'd have my kind of breakfast muesli, which I don't think was that bad. Then I'd kind of have my sandwich for lunch. And then I'd be like, oh, it'd be really good because I've had just a sandwich and my breast, breast muesli, but now I'm really hungry and I'd have a massive crash in the middle of the afternoon. And then I'd eat some kind of rubbish sugar stuff and then I'd overfill myself at night with tea. So I'd just not satisfy myself during the day. And I think, first of all, lunches have definitely changed. So the lunches are probably bigger than they were previously, but they're more varied. So today I've had like two omelets with some vegetables in them. And that's kind of two small omelets, but lots of vegetables on top of them. And that's filled me up. And that's quite varied. By the time I've had that, I'm kind of like, I don't feel like eating something else at the end of it. Um, and I don't have those then sort of like, right, it's three o'clock. So I must have something to eat. And if I do get the snack attacks, it generally is a case of, well, actually, you know, what, slice up an apple and I can have that, or, you know, have a banana, that works. Also, the first time ever, I think, I started having... I've made my own muesli from porridge oats now overnight with um, a bit like overnight oats, but like a cross between the overnight oats and birch muesli. Pimp it up with lots of seeds and nuts and things like that in there. And, and a bit of fruit on the side. But my fruit portions tend to be half a banana and half an apple as opposed to a full apple or a full banana. And I think I remember seeing a recipe from you that was half banana. I was like, well, that's stupid, but you're with the other half a banana, you know? <laughs> I'm like, oh. It's possible you can put half a piece of fruit in the fridge and it's fine. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm smiling here, Sean, because I'm like a proud coach. Everything you just said, like from where you were in terms of what you were eating beforehand to where you are now, the difference that was made to like get rid of the IBS type symptoms, like you see when you were like borderline diabetes, you kind of felt like the sugar crashes. And then like you see that the almost been binge eating in the evenings because you weren't satisfied and you're looking for more and more food. And it's that whole thing about where you were then to where you are now is Rob's part. And that's only going to stand you in good stead in the yeah. future. I hope so. I feel like I'm in a different place. Colin. Well, like I say, I think um, if there was a word to give you for a start, <laughs> start life, I'd be giving it to you. So well done, Sharon. Appreciate it. And if anyone listening to this wants to kind of reach out and ask you any questions, and then the Healthy Well Women group, hop on. Sharon's a member of that group too, so she'll come back and answer any questions we have as well. Yeah, and any questions about coaching, where to start, I thought that looks like, then drop me a note. Thank you, Sharon. All right, thank you.